Giving our praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, by Hashem Harachachodash. Say double honors to our apostles and elders here. Great millstone, peace and blessings to the Lord's hopefully led. So I finished watching Elder um, Yeshawamba's lesson titled Are the 144,000 Literally Virgins. And that can be found in um, in the book of Revelation where it said that these will not defile women for they are virgins. And, you know, it's talking about spiritually the elect, the 144,000 men. In the eyes of the Lord, their righteousness, um, they're justified by their, their faith in righteousness. And it's Yahweh Shai who chooses, uh, who, who cleansed them of their wicked, their, their filthiness and their wickedness and things of that nature. And that's for that, that makes them uh, perfect. You know, they, uh, that's why the book of Revelation also tells you that the white that they'll be re wearing will represent the righteousness of the saints. The white represents purity in, in marriage customs. When the bride wears the white, it's really because she's supposed to be a virgin and their white represents purity. Um, so the elect in the eyes of the Lord, which is the bride, will be made pure, right? Spiritual. And one of the things that they'll be known for is not staining the the truth, not staining the doctrine, because the doctrine is pure. As the scripture says, every word of the Heavenly Father is pure. But the scriptures warn about her, 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 uh, heresies, heretics, uh, false prophets, and these seek to stain the ministry and stain your doctrine because they understand that if you have a little leaven, then the leaven, you, you'll leaven the whole lump. So we have to have a firm stance and defend the gospel and keep it pure as possible and keep the keep the church without spot before the eyes of the Heavenly Father. And I just want to speak a little bit on that to just, you know, add more to the fact that, yes, it's, it's talking about the church, it's talking about the elect, 144,000 men, right? In the eyes of the Lord, they are considered pure because they are been cleaned by the word. They believe the word, they were calling on the name, and ever since they've been walking right upright to the best of their ability and teaching the correct doctrine. So that keeps them pure. And that's what that means. OK, now talking about actual uh, physical virgins in, the, in in a literal sense. That's not what it's talking about. Uh, the book of Ephesians, chapter five, verse twenty five. It says, husband, love your wives, even as Yahweh Shai also loved the church and gave it and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, right? Because now his church is uh, cleansed. His church is speaking one doctrine or all on one accord, right? It says that he might present it to himself, meaning his wife, a glorious church having not spot, it's like a not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourish and cherish it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined unto his wife, and they shall be, and they shall be, two shall be one flesh this is a great mystery but I speak concerning the Lord and the church see so he's talking about the church and he's talking about how Yahweh Shai gave him his life for the church for the ministry and he loveth the ministry and the brotherhood as himself because he's going to take them as you could say as his bride so that explains why the scripture says that the the woman you know represents um, playing a harlot by diving into what other gods, other philosophies, other doctrines. When you're clean, as the Lord made you clean, you, you your doctrine is whole. It's one, one Lord, one baptism. Diving into other philosophies and trying to merge the truth with the world. And your worldly knowledge, because that's what Jake does. Jake come up off the street, 
And instead of completely putting out the old man and changing, you know, those uh, those inner workings, which can yield nothing but evilness, evil and wickedness. Instead of changing, they'll rather just make a doctrine to merge the truth with their worldly and their fleshly desires. So the scripture says, come ye out from them and be separate and to um, be clean and to not mingle yourselves with those unbelievers. Jake, who still wants to do that, will instead try to merge the truth into that and say, no, nah, it's OK. We can still be OK with uh, non-believers, you know, because, you know, that's what I want to do. So that's what I'm going to teach. Right. So they're staining the ministry. They're staining the church by adding and taking away from the scriptures. You know, that community Israelite spirit, the, the Yahweh, Yahweh Shah is not dealing with that because it's of men. As the scripture says, if it be of the most high, you cannot overthrow it. But if it be a man, it will come to naught. The community is a light spirit of changing the doctrine to fit and appease each one's needs to fit their own belly. It's coming to naught because it's of men. But that's what people do. That's an example of staining the ministry, staining the church. Christian scriptures clearly say not to join yourself to the unbelievers or be together with the uh, or to be unequally yoked with them. But what did Jake do? They make it an exception. Joining hands with the nation of Islam. That's not in the scriptures, but that's what they do. So the ministry is stained. And when you have one spot, you're going to have multiple spots. OK, that's why the scripture says spots and blemishes. They are in your feasts, which I'll probably pull that. Verse 33 says, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Jude chapter uh chapter one verse verse twelve. I'll start at eleven or oh, ten. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally, as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Baalam for reward, and perished in the gang saying of Kor. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees of whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Read that in NLT. It says, when these people eat with you in your fellowship meals, commemorating the Lord's love, they are like dangerous reeves that can shipwreck you. They are like shameless shepherds who care only for themselves. They are like clouds blowing over the land without giving any rain. They are like trees in the autumn that are doubly dead, for they bear no fruit and have been pulled up by the roots. Right. So the scriptures warn you about those individuals, especially those who come without sound doctrine. And your job is to defend the gospel. And if you're following individuals like that, you have to realize, OK, these guys seek to stain the word and stain the ministry for their own gain. And you shouldn't follow those guys. OK, I mean, we're making it kind of plain, very plain. But yes, the, the virgins in the scriptures is just referring to uh, the church, who, the righteousness of the Israelites. Slocky, I see this woman, Edomite woman trying to park. She about to hit somebody's car. She got all this space. I tell you. It's talking about the church, okay, the righteousness of the elect. They are without sin in the eyes of the Lord. And not only that, but they keep the doctrine pure to keep it holy. Even Yahushua himself was very peculiar about being perfect. As Revelations chapter 2, this woman can't drive, man. She can't drive, man. Slakia. This is a parked car, and she's about to hit it. Because she doesn't know what she's doing. And she got all this space. Revelation 2 verse 4. This, this is him talking to the church of Ephesus. It says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. 
Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. It says, But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I eat the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise. All right, and I'm gonna jump down. I'm talking to the church of Pergamos. Verse 12, it says, And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things said he which hath a sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is, and thou holdest and thou and thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. We just read about that. Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. So when it came to that church, he didn't like the fact that they still had false doctrines into the church because it caused stains to the ministry and caused Israel to go off. <clears throat> so what did he say? He said, get rid of it. Because as we just read in, in, in Ephesians, right, Paul said what I want to, the Lord wants to put, he said, I want to present the Lord's wife, his, 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 uh, his church to him as a chaste virgin, <clears throat> as a woman, uh, pure, not, not known for dibbling and dabbling with other men, right? She's, she's pure. She, you're, you're, you're just right. You're a virgin. You have one doctrine, one baptism, not secretly worshiping this guy, not secretly eating things sacrificed to that guy. It's talking about purity, purity all over. We're going to be pure in the eyes of the Lord because for one, Lord willing, we're part of the number. For one, uh, he cleanses us of sin and he, we're justified by our faith in him. So therefore, in his eyes, we're pure. And then also the, the doctrine that we teach is going to be one. It's going to be one. It's going to be uh, pure. It's going to be on one accord, praising the names, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shah, one name, one baptism, one Lord. And that's what that means. Isn't that, it's not hard to understand. And the reason why people make that, uh, try to push that is like being little virgins because they're seeking for some type of uh, glory for themselves. You see, because the thing is, everybody wants to be special. And the fact that, you know, we have the truth that we're Israelites, number one, that we're Israelites, and that the, the Lord opened up our minds to understand this truth and even prophesied and or have our special gift, that makes us special already. But you see, Jake want to be more special. Okay, so they look for ways to seek out their own glory or to say, I'm, I'm more special because of this. And that's 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 why they do it. Uh, Proverbs 25, 27 says it is not good to eat much. It is not good to eat much honey. So for men to search their own glory, it is not glory. Because they're trying to search their own glory. And they're trying to, you know, basically say that uh, I'm more special because of this. And this is what you see when Jake gets too, when they eat too much honey. That's why earlier in the, earlier in the verse it says, verse 16, Has thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled or with and vomited it. Right? Because though it's sweet, too much of it, then it, it can make you sick. And that's why the scriptures talk about over being over-righteous much. So you you have jakes that do those type of things that add to the scriptures, add to the doctrine to make themselves, uh, to seek their own glory, right? 
but it, it's very plain and understand what it's talking about and uh and you know the elect will understand that that's what that's talking about that paul himself condoned marriage i mean i want to read that paul himself is telling you to marry aka have sex so are you saying that he just told you to write away your 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 salvation ticket that's first corinthians chapter uh uh 7 and 34 says there is a difference also between a wife and a virgin the unmarried woman cared for the things of the lord that she may be holy both in body and spirit but she that is married cared for the things of the world how she may please her husband and this i speak for your own profit not that i may cast a snare upon you but for that which is comely and that ye may attend upon the lord without distraction but if any man think he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age and need so require, let him do what he will. He sinneth not, let them marry. So what is Paul just saying here? So he's, he's teaching. I'm trying to, you know, the best way to really build yourself up in this truth is not to worry about marriage. However, if you are already a spouse or you already have a woman, and you know, you didn't go into her yet and she's hot. And, you know, she's ready and she needs so require. He said, go ahead and do so. You didn't sin. Let's read that in the NLT. It says, but if a man thinks that he's treating his fiance improperly and will inevitably get into his passion, let him marry her as he wishes. It is not a sin. Right. So it's not a sin. So Paul in the same chapter is telling you that it's OK to marry, that it's OK to have sex. So how is it all of a sudden you have to be a virgin to be part of the 144? Like just use common sense people. But again, you know, these guys are trying to seek out, search out their own glory because Jake want to be more special, even though they're already special. But they got to say, no, no, I got to be more special. <laughs> right. So, no, that's not what it's talking about. OK, and it's very plain. You go watch the other lesson. Very, very good. And, you know, we, we got, we're going to constantly go over a topic every now and then because the question does come up because it's about a spiritual it's all about spiritual right in in that sense but no it's not a it's not a sin to not be a virgin or to be married right with that shalom